suspicious, and we have central detectives on the target crime scene attempt. Central detectives, copy waste of space. I'd rather see a forest of gum trees with an urn underneath each one. There's a mysterious body that's definitely not supposed to be in here. They arrived to inter a client. Supposedly the crypt hasn't been open for years. Was it vandalised? The lock was still intact. Both sets of keys are held by the funeral parlour. This is the funeral director, Carlo Gaberti. Mr Gaberti! <coughs> Uh, this is Detectives Hayden and Barnes. Do I need to make alternate arrangements for my client, Inspector? Might be wise. The detective? Yeah. I doubt I know who it is. But if you'd like me to view the body. You yeah, will we'll keep that in mind if you could just wait, sir. Yeah, there are footprints everywhere here. I've taken, uh, taken impressions. Uh, mostly the pallbearers, I'd say. You right in there, are you comfortable? Yeah. I'll, um, I'll get out of here. Okay, that'd be a very good idea. Now, there's no sign of a struggle, no sign of any blood. However, there are these. They are distinct drag marks. Now, they lead directly to the plinth. Now, the cloth in which the uh, body is wrapped looks like silk. It is, in fact, cotton. But there's this in her hand, which is intriguing. What is it? A flower? Yes, it's a slipper orchid. Cypripedium, to be more precise. Right, well, that's about it for me for the moment. Right, well, can I have a look then? Yes, you can. You realise I'll have to um, cut that sheeting? Yes, by all means. You know, I'd say that this is proper burial sheeting. Have a look at those crosses embroidered on the edge. Yeah, yeah well... Could be right. What is that? Makeup. Uh, it's almost as if someone was making a mockery, isn't it? What about the flower? It's a young woman, late teens to early thirties. It's a bit hard to tell under all this. But the abdomen's distended and discoloured. I'd say of her having been dead in the vicinity of five to seven days. There's no. Obvious cause of death, Lance. Could you lift the shoulders for me? Mm. Ah, yeah. Oh. A depressed fracture of the skull. Doesn't mean that it was murder, of course. You could have fallen on something. Thanks, Lance. Mr. Gaberti, would you care to view the body now, sir? Be careful not to touch anything, please. Mr. Gaberti. It's Kate. Katie Pryor. I must see Antonietta. Who's Antonietta? She won't be long. Antonietta and Tony De Bono raised Katie from when she was quite young. Katie was like family to them. But no one reported her missing. I assume she was staying away, for Shane's sake. And who's Shane? Oh, Shane de Bono, their son. Mm. Katie was engaged to Shane until recently. Perché hai portato la polizia? Abbiamo un cliente. Io ho riconosciuto la donna dentro la tomba. Er Katie, Antonietta. Yeah, we'll need you to speak English, I'm afraid, please. Katie. Non è possibile. 
possible. Mrs. de Bonham, would you like to sit down? Yeah. Yeah. Antonietta. Mr. Gaberti, we're going to need that second set of keys for our forensic people to look at, sir. Yes, of course. In the office. Mrs. Devano, could you tell me when you last saw Katie? Two weeks ago, I suppose. No longer. Um, Mr. Ghiberti mentioned that, um, that Katie had recently broken an engagement with your son. Is that right? Oh, this has nothing to do with Shane. He loved Katie. How can I get in contact with Shane? He's on the way back from the mountains. He went skiing. Shane was naturally very distressed at the breakup of the engagement, so I sent him away to recover. He will be very upset. Sorry. They must be in the other room. I saw Gino outside. Is it true about Katie? Yes, darling. Gabriella, my daughter. Gonna do. She hadn't called for ages. I should have said something, shouldn't I? I should have said something. Shh, Gabriella. Hey. Go and do the flowers. We must all keep busy. Come. This way. The keys must be out the back, detective. Was Antonetta upset about the engagement being broken off? She accepted it. She's a practical woman. Right. We'll need to speak to Katie's friends. I don't think she had many. She didn't seem to get close to people. Apart from the De Bonos and my daughter Gabriella. They were good friends. And not you? Well, our paths crossed naturally, but I, I had no particular interest in her. Right, okay. Good. Gina, go home. There's nothing to see here. Stonemason's son. Simple, you know. My husband is in hospital. He had a coronary last week. His second. The news of this could kill him. I understand that you and your husband raised Katie, is that right? Katie's mother died when she was ten and the court allowed us to take her in. Could you, could you tell me a little bit about Katie? She was an angel. She moved to a place of her own last year. I can give you the address. I've never been there myself. She was a very private person. Were you surprised when she broke off the engagement with Shane? No, not really. She was too young to settle down. What you do to her? Shane. What you do to Katie? Hey, hey, take it easy. I'm a cop. Get back here. Just take it easy, all right? Just take it easy. I don't know what she told me. Look, I told you, get back and stay calm. You stay calm. That scum killed my Katie. Just take it easy, all right? Why are you wasting your time with me? Carlo's the one you want. When did you last see Katie, Shane? Last Saturday. I went round to see if I could work things out. She told me to get lost. Never let me inside the place. So I thought I'd give her some time, you know. I headed for the slopes. When was that? Sunday morning. Um, how would you describe your relationship with Katie? I loved her. She loved me too. But Carlo was always in Katie's ear. Like he wasn't content with my mum, he wanted my woman too. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Carlo Gaberti was having a relationship with your mother. No, he just thinks he's God's gift to women. He'd been coming on to Katie. And, um, how do you know that? She told me. I was not involved with Katie. Then why would Shane think you were? Possibly because I took her to lunch three weeks ago. Antonietta had asked me to speak to her about postponing the engagement with Shane and... <sighs> until she was older. So we were leaving the restaurant. She threw her arms around me, started kissing me. I told her not to be so silly. Really? Katie told Shane that you came on to her. Who knows what game she was trying to play? There were things about Katie. 
according to my daughter, Gabriella, she was seeing another man behind Shane's back. Who? I don't know who. But I can understand why. Shane's jealous. Obsessively so. Even of my friendship with his mother. Is it a, just a friendship? <laughs> Tony, her husband, is too ill to go out much. So Antonietta and I, we go to dinner, the opera. She's a virtuous woman. Was Carlo Gaberti sleeping with Katie? Well, it's a distinct possibility. You know, Shane's got one hell of a temper. You add that to a suspicion his fiance's sleeping around. Maybe that's what his mother was afraid of, why she sent him skiing. Mm. So that he couldn't harm Katie. Or maybe the mother sent him away so she could harm Katie. Mm. You know, a crypt should have been a great place to stash a body. Except somebody died and they had to open the thing. Okay, a depressed fracture. Only small lacerations would have produced very little bleeding. Single blow with a heavy object. How heavy, Toots? Um, baseball bat? Stone rolling pin? That kind of heavy. Okay. Lance, could you give me a container, please? Aye, aye, Captain. Yeah, these might be able to tell us something. It looks like a stone fragment. What do you think, Lance? Well, I'll let you know if you're right. So you're looking for a broken murder weapon, if that helps? Okay. Got a dislocated shoulder, post-mortem bruising to the upper arms. Somebody treated her quite roughly after she died. Well, being dragged along by the shoulders or the arms, that would correspond with the drag marks you found, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, especially when you consider these abrasions on the heel and backs of the calves. Toots, any idea how soon after death the body was moved to the crypt? Quite soon. I can't be more specific than that. Mm. And I can't specify a time of death yet either. The maggots I took from the scene are still with the entomologist. All right. You know, all this preparation of the body, the makeup, the sheet, the movement to the crypt, why would you bother? What was the point? The police never stop asking questions. We all need to prove where we were at the time. Well, you know where I was. I was out on the slopes every day. And at night? When I phoned you? I told you, Mum. I was in my room drinking. Then we can say I found you on those nights, spoke to you. It's always suspect people close to the deceased, Shane. Her name was Katie, Mum. You'd better tell me what time you phoned, I guess. Shane! Please. I can tell you the key on the left, uh, that's Carlo Gaberti's, has been used recently to open the crypt. The, uh, the spare hasn't been used in ages. Both keys are kept at the funeral parlour. Right, so unless there is yet another key, the killer had to have access to the funeral parlour. What's our murder weapon made of? Uh, it's definitely marble. It's fine, evenly coloured. Um, it's a uh, statuary marble, Carrera or the like. Now, some of those pieces are polished on both sides, so I say we're looking at a um, solid object with finer protuberances. There's a marble angel in the chapel at the funeral parlour. Oh, is there now? Hmm. Uh, now look, Imogen was right about the burial sheeting. It's rarely used these days, but most uh, funeral directors stock them. And the makeup supplies taken from the victim's face, they're again their uh, mortuary supplies. I'll be going over the um, Bono's premises with a fine tooth comb. Got the entomologist's report here. Who wants it? In the box. Larvae deposited in fresh flesh. Yum, yum indicating the body had been exposed to the elements for six days. That means the girl was killed on Wednesday? Tuesday night. I can't see the body being moved to the crypt during the day. Right, off you go. Come on. Are you throwing us out? I am indeed. Come on.
You do not have my permission to search here. We are in mourning. We have a search warrant, Mrs. De Bunner. Um, could someone point us in the direction of the embalming room? Through the chapel, left, down the corridor. Right. Look, now, could we also make sure the chapel is kept clear until I finished in there as well? Donna Come on, Capella. Loro non possono fare questo. Uh, murder is in fact a greater sacrilege, Mr. De Bono. I am, however, aware that it is a place of worship and we will be as quick as we possibly can. Since when have you understood Italian, Sergeant? Did you pick it up from Italian opera? Mm. This industry is subject to intense hygiene procedures. I don't know when you get the time to learn all those things. We know prints, no fibres. Been scrubbed cleaner than Imogen's morgue. Even the cleaners wear gloves. Do you blame them? Useless. Do you have any idea yet who did this terrible thing to Katie? Uh, no, not yet. But the, um, the autopsy results suggest that she died on Tuesday night. You're wasting your time here, then. On Tuesday night, I was at the hospital with my husband. You already know that. Carlo joined me, and then I phoned my son Shane, and he was to come home, of course, but Tony's condition had stabilized, and... Um, I will need to speak to your husband, Mrs. De Bono. That is out of the question. Antonietta, I suspect they will speak to him anyway. Don't you think it's better if you're there? St. Agnew's private. I'll meet you at the entry. Do you mind if I borrow your publicity album? I wanted to wait until you were stronger. Hmm? He's had another heart attack. Please be brief. What do you want to know? Uh, your wife tells me that that you stayed back late at the funeral parlor on the night that Katie died? There was an audit coming. The books needed attention. At about nine o'clock, I had the pain in the chest. I take some pills, sit, rest, until I'm able to drive. Do you remember what time you left? He came home about 10 o'clock. I took one look at him and called for an ambulance. Mr. De Bonnet, do you remember hearing anything or seeing anything that night at the funeral parlor? Uh, I think maybe I hear a car, but I am not sure. I'm sorry. I would like to help you find who did this. Why would God let an old man live? and take a beautiful young woman like Katie. Well, just plug it in there. Plug it in there. Oh, we won't be much longer, Mr. Gaberti. Oh, by the way, I've taken some item, items from your um, embalming room. Three uh, burial sheetings and some samples of your makeup supplies. They're quite standard, you know. All funeral parlours stock them. We'll also need to uh, take the... Uh, Marble figurine. Polly lights plugged in, Sergeant. Where do you want to scan? Where I said, Constable. Where I said, uh, over here. I'd rather you didn't. Take it. The angel. Yeah, we'll look after it very well. Turn the lights off on your way out if you don't mind. Day, so I was here till nearly seven. And what did you do after that? Home. Dad cooked dinner, then we watched TV. Then Auntie Antoinette called to tell us about Uncle Tony. Why didn't you go to the hospital with your father? I was watching a movie called American Ninja. Gosh, it was great. Yeah. Tell me, Gabrielle, do you get much call for orchids? Nasty things. All fleshy and moist. I only get them in if someone asks especially. Right, have you had them in in the last, well, say, two or three weeks? No. OK. Tell me about Katie. What sort of a girl was she? Do you believe in angels, Detective? I've got my own special guardian angel. 
I used to tell Katie that she needed one too. She'd just laugh. She thought I was stupid. There you go. A lot of people do. I thought you said Katie was your best friend. Was. I'd kind of gone off her. And why was that? Saw her kissing Dad. He says I imagined it. It's pretty hard to imagine something like that, isn't it? Yeah, Malcolm, Steve. I'm on my way to the dead girl's place. Yes? Yeah, in here. Okay, Gabriella confirms she saw her father kissing Katie, but then again, she reckons she sees angels. Gee, this isn't too bad, is it? Especially for a junior clerk. What do you reckon? Three hundred a week? Two seventy-five. Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks like everything was bought on the same day. Yeah. You know, Katie had very expensive taste in clothes, or way beyond my budget. So what are you thinking? Blackmail? Mm, too sophisticated. I get the impression of a, a little girl playing grown-ups. You see, this is definitely not the murder scene. I mean, nothing violent ever happened here. Mm, some murderers have been known to leave the scene exactly as they found it, though. Yeah, but no one else had a key to this place. She never asked anyone back, not with the De Bonos, not anyone she worked with, not even Gabriella. This was a very private place. So what was she hiding from? All the pay went straight into her account and nothing came out. I reckon someone was looking after this girl. Mm. Well, paying for her to keep quiet. Sorry if I mucked things up by phoning to tell you about Katie. Aunt Antonietta said I should have left it to her. I was asking my guardian angel about you, you know. He said to tell you not to be too unhappy. I'm busy here, Gabriella. Nick off, eh? She was no good for you, Shane. I told you that, didn't I? I mean, I loved Katie too, but... But what? I guess whatever she did, she's gone now. So if she was seeing someone else... Who? Who was she seeing? I didn't say she was exactly, just that if well, she... If you don't know what you're talking about, just shut up and leave me alone, will you? the burial ship. Anything on the make? Well, as Mr. Gaberti very helpfully pointed out, it could have come from any one of a hundred parlours who used the same supplier. Yeah, but Katie Pryor wasn't known to a hundred other funeral parlours. Anything linking her to the place? Uh, well, there's some fingerprints, but no one's denied she spent any time there. There's definitely no blood. This, the murder weapon? Uh, well, it's intact, so I'd say not. I'm about to head over to the victim's apartment now. Might have a bit more luck. Do you get onto that ski lot? Yeah, the clerk on Tuesday night thinks he remembers putting a phone call through to Shane's room. I'm waiting on the phone call. All right. Hmm. Well, there's no obvious signs of a struggle. Be here. How did you get in, Mr. Bonner? Down no, Katie's back. The keys were in. Yes, well, I'll have that, thank you. Someone had stuffed it under one of the seats in the hearse. I found it when I was cleaning. Look, it was hers, you know. I didn't have anything of hers. And um, what were you looking for? I don't know. I figured there had to be some reason she broke off our engagement. Some other guy, you know. I just needed to know. Well, I'll, uh, We'll start upstairs then. Um, you do know that withholding evidence is a, a serious offence, don't you? Yeah, I know. I was going to give it to you. I told you. I just wanted to... Excuse me. 
<clears throat> Vance. Tess, his mother, Antoinette, did call. Shane at about 11, but there was no reply in his room. He'd been to the bar earlier to buy a bottle, but nobody remembers seeing him later on. OK, thank you. Um, nobody remembers seeing you at the ski lodge on Tuesday night. Yeah, Mum phoned. You know that. Are you calling her a liar? I'd like you to come down to Homicide with me. No, I'm not going anywhere with you. Well, I could, um, I could charge you with break and enter. Geez, you ought to be home raising kids, you know that. Okay, come on. No, I'm coming, all right. That detective came to the shop today. The man. I hope you told him everything you could. Everything. About you and Katie, too. You don't mind, do you? What did you tell him? What are you talking about, Gabriella? About seeing you together that day? Leave these for now, Gabriella. Go and do the offices. The police went and took the marble angel from the chapel for testing. I hope you told them to be careful with it. Are you having an affair with Katie? No. And why did Gabriella say what she did? She lives in a fantasy land. You know that. She's not stupid, Carlo. She sees a lot more than you think. phone to tell me about dad but you didn't take the call shane and you weren't in the restaurant or the bar where were you look i was there it's just that i was i didn't hear the phone ring simple as that pretty hard not to hear a phone ringing beside your bed not when you've got a whole bottle of vodka under your belt oh you've been drinking in your room that night had you yeah that's right i wasn't in the mood for company why did you tell us you'd spoken to your mother i knew it wasn't gonna look good for me that's all so you asked her to lie for you no, she made a mistake. I just took advantage of it. She said she spoke to you, Shane. Yeah, she thought she did. She wasn't thinking all that clearly. But Dad had almost carked it, remember? Mm -hmm. You know, you would have had plenty of time to drive to the city, murder Katie, and be back on the slopes the next day. Is that what happened, Shane? Jeez, the bag was in the hearse. Who else but Carlo would have put it there, eh? It's a pity you didn't leave it there, Shane. You see, your prints are the only ones on it now. <sighs> I was protecting him. Any mother would. Do you, um, did you think that Shane killed Katie? He'd never do such a thing. I only wanted to spare him the pain of, of what precisely is happening now. Your son has, um, has quite a fierce temper. Would you call him violent? All you have seen is a young man in grief. If you could see him with Gabriella. She drives him mad, but he never gets angry. Shane did not do this terrible thing. Irises and Delphiniums, Uncle Tony. Your favourites. Favourite colours too. You like that? Now there's some fruit here as well. For your bowels. Because I know how much trouble old men have with their bowels. I know all the things that make you happy, don't I, Uncle Tony? What is it now, Gino? Gino, what is it? It's for Mrs. De Bono. You sure? You know, there's something really off about their relationship. Ah, Italian mother, only child. She's bound to be protective. Mm, maybe. You know, Katie doesn't seem to have had a life outside of the De Bonos and Gabriella. Seems very weird for a girl that age to have no friends. I keep coming back to thinking that she must have been hiding something or ashamed of something. Mm, something that killed her. 
Hey, look at this. What have you got? This is the funeral parlour catalogue. They use it to show prospective clients their range of services. And the friendly staff who work there. <laughs> Dee, can you blow this up? There are two angels. Well, well. Two little angels. Give us a look. See? Two angels. Ah, uh, yeah. Gino delivered the second angel this evening. Repaired to your instructions. The police are determined to prove Shane killed her. How can you be so sure Shane didn't do it? How dare you say that? What are you going to do with it? I will dispose of it. Where nobody will find it. Repairing it isn't enough, Antonietta. It has to disappear forever. Did you report the second angel missing? We believe the client had taken it. When people are bereaved, they do things they don't normally do. We assumed whoever took it would bring it back in time. Mm -hmm. We were wrong. Um, has anything been changed in this area in the last 48 hours? Of course not. I don't know what you think you'll find. You've already combed every inch. You know about antiques, Fisk? What's it worth? Well, I'm not an expert, but uh, as a pair, I don't know, maybe 10,000. It's good work, it's early 19th century, I'd say. So it's hard to imagine someone not reporting the theft. Yeah, difficult in the extreme. Now, look, you two need to find me that other angel. Yeah, well, any suggestions will be gratefully received, Fisk. Hey, when did they say that angel was nicked? A couple of years ago. Oh, that's a bit weird, because this photo was only taken a couple of months ago. Well, how do you know that? Well, there's a label on the back, and I, uh, I phoned the lab, and the guy there remembered doing the job. And you're absolutely sure? Well, he reckoned a whole roll of shots of coffins isn't the sort of thing you forget in a hurry. Oh. See, they come in handy once in a while, don't I? Once in a while you do, Constable. Very good. Somebody's lying, Mrs De Bono. You say the photographs were taken two years ago, but the lab says they only processed them a couple of months ago. I have nothing to say. The angel was stolen. Well, there's a chance that whoever stole it is also the murderer. Do you know who that is, Mr. Liberty? Who are you trying to protect? Yourself? Did you kill Katie? Where's the statue, Mr. Liberty? Are you protecting your son? Are you protecting Shane? You can direct any further questions to my lawyer. I need to call my lawyer. Closed ranks on us. The question is, what is it exactly that they're hiding from us? It's a slipper orchid. Cypripedium, to be more precise. What is it, Tess? Tess? Mrs. Devine, I'm Mr. Gilberti. Uh, just a minute. There was a pot plant uh, in your reception area on the day that the body was found. Where is it now? The slipper orchid. I brought it back here. Well, it just looked like an ordinary pot plant to me. I didn't see any flowers on it. <laughs> That's because they were dead, silly. That's why I brought it back. Uncle Tony likes to have something exotic around, so I keep a supply and change them over when the flowers finish. So it's still here? A cypripedium? Where'd you get that? Gabriella took it from the funeral parlour. Impossible, I would have seen it. No, it had already gone when you did your search. You took it back to a greenhouse. Well, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> because I, I didn't know what it was. I've never seen an orchid like that. Oh, I well, could have used your imagination, detective. It rather looks like a flower has been cut 
from this stem, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get a match. Uh, yep, that's a match, it's been cut from there. Well, we know where the flower came from. We know more than that, Fisk. We know who killed Katie Pryor. Mr. Lebono. What do you want now? We've been told we could find the stonemason's son here, sir. Yeah, he's around there. Gino? Hey! Gino, we're police officers. We just need to ask you some questions, all right? You're going to take my kitty? He said he was going to take my kitty. It's all right. It's okay. We won't take your kitty, all right? It's okay. I just want to ask you some questions. Come on. Madre de Dio. Primo Shane. Dopo io. Dopo Carlo e adesso Tony. My husband has had three heart attacks. He hasn't the strength to kill a mosquito. Did you kill Katie Pryor, Mr. De Bono? You met her regularly at the, um, at the funeral parlor, is that right? And that's why you went there that night, not to do the books? How long had it been going on, Mr. Debono? I waited until she was a woman. Until she was 14, before we... A girl 14 is not an adult, sir. She was old enough. And I make it good for her. Treated her like princess. Anything she asked. Rent, clothes, anything. She was engaged to to your son. Is that your idea too, Mr. De Bonner? Did you pay Katie to marry Shane? I couldn't bear the thought of her meeting anybody outside of the family. And then when she decided she didn't want to go through with it, is that when you killed her, sir? She said she has enough of all of us. She said she was going to the police and tell her that I raped her. You mean she threatened to tell the truth, sir? She was willing. Oh my God, other women, young women. Yes, I knew, but Katie, a child. She laughed at me. She called me an old fool, my Katie. Mr. De Bono, remember you have been cautioned, sir. The angel somehow was in my hand. I hit her once, just to stop her. But I hit her too hard. And I had to prepare her for a decent burial. But my hand did shake. The only woman I ever loved. The clothes I put in a casket to be cremated the next time. But you forgot a bag. I went back to the chapel to check. I found it. I in my heart. So you, you needed someone else to move the body into the crypt? The stonemason's son? Gino? Do say you monster! Tony de Bono. Why are you diabolo? He threatened to take the poor little so-and-so's kitten away from him? Yeah. Gino's silence came a lot cheaper than Katie's. And this botched makeup job, I swear that's done by an amateur. Well, as good as. Tony de Bono hadn't worked in the embalming room for 40 years. I like a respect, more like a final violation. You know, if there is such a thing as a guardian angel, I reckon Katie Pryor's deserted her a long time ago. Hey, the angel. The murder weapon. What happened to that? Fisk will find it. Nothing. We'll carry on, 
Councillor, I think you should probably head west. I think I should have packed the compass. <laughs>